So as Hadrian said, uh, my title is the Associate Director for Creation and Curation. I'm not quite sure how I got such a cool title, um, but I'll, I'll take it. Um, but what I want to talk about here today is the, so the digital library resources that we provide. Um, and more specifically, what I want to talk about, digital library is sort of a big term, and it means a lot of things, giving virtual reference and a lot of different stuff like that. But what I want to focus on here is talking about our institutional repository. Um, and so this is, this is data storage, but this is different than the storage that we've been talking about with high performance computing. You know, we think about this more from a publishing model perspective than we do sort of an active data management perspective. Um, but the idea is that it stores the full objects, their metadata, and provides versioning for, for all kinds of objects, whether it's text, images, data sets, GIS data sets, maps, things like that. Um, and what it does is it provides a permanent home and when we, what we mean by a permanent home, we essentially mean a permanent URL. Um, you may have seen, if you've ever tried to pull up a URL that was referenced in some work, that it disappears. One of the things that we do with Digital Case is we, 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 use, a handle, we use a handle service that provides a permanent URL. No matter where the, the data ends up living, we always provide a persistent uh, location for it. Um, also, when you, use, when you use our institutional repository, the contents that you put in there are searchable and discoverable. Um, and we also advocate for an open access model, uh, although I say open access except for when it's not, because one of the things we'll talk about is in the new version of Digital Case, we've actually been putting some security controls around the content that we have, because um, we know not everything can be made available as, as open access. So this is the URL for Digital Case, um, which, is, which is active now if you're on your, if you're on your devices. Uh, and if you would have went a couple weeks ago, this is what the site would have looked like. And this was the sort of the original homepage for Digital Case. Uh, we've recently undergone a complete, uh, an, an almost complete redevelopment of this application. And now it lives, that, that original URL still exists. It goes to sort of a temporary homepage. Um, but the real, real application exists at digital.case.edu, um, which I'm also happy to say is, is a responsive platform for your mobile devices. Um, but this is what it looks like if you were to go there today. Uh, and it, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty basic database, um, research database if, you, if you're familiar with them. You, know, you have sort of the, uh, the, the faceting on the side. We have search, browse. Uh, but it's essentially sort of a, a home for a bunch of objects and collections. And we'll get into a little bit more about what's, what's contained in this. But this is what it looks like today. Um, so Digital Case, uh, it's, it's based on a Fedora repository which is robust, modular, and an open source platform. It's a really kind of a best of breed when it comes to institutional repositories that a lot of institutions are using. Uh, it allows us to do full text searching for the contents that are in it. Um, we also even have things in there like book viewers that if you have a document loaded in there and you're using a text encoding um, framework that you can uh, actually recreate a book, a digitized book in the platform. Um, Fedora is built both for access and for preservation. It's suitable for large and complex collections. Uh, it's good, it's equally good at handling either cultural materials or scientific data. Um, and it's really based on the Dublin Core metadata standards, if you're familiar with that. It's sort of the, the basic set of metadata that's available on the web, but it's not limited to that. Um, I know one of the earlier presentations they were talking about Mesh, um, and it's, you know, any sort of, any sort of uh, metadata standard we want to throw at this, we, we, can, we can do so. Um, with the changes with Digital Case 2.0, we're still using the Fedora framework, which we upgraded. Um, but what we're, what we're doing is we're applying the Hydra framework around it. Fedora is really just sort of a, a, a management application, but uh, Hydra around it gives you sort of the user interface experience to it, um, which is an open source platform. It's based on Ruby on Rails uh, programming language. And by participating with Hydra, we actually get to be part of a really robust um, community of people that are using this. So people like Stanford, Stanford was one of the original uh, universities to, uh, to develop this along with Columbia, Princeton, Cornell, Penn State, IU. So we're, we're really within a, a sort of a great community to be working on some of these things uh, with, our, with our institutional repository. Um, so one of the big questions is what, what goes in this? Um, so we sort of break this out into three areas. You know, we sort of generally say the academic output of this institution. Um, you know, that it's scholarly, that it's something that should be persistent. Um, and that we do have a collection development policy for this that kind of determines what, what gets put in it. Um, but keep in mind that these are the things that are sort of meant to be maintained permanently, which is what sort of differs from some of the high performance computing storage that they have. 
Um, we also have some stuff from some partner organizations like the Western Reserve Historical Society. We actually sort of annualize a version of their Encyclopedia of Cleveland History. Um, and then we also have the materials from the library ourselves where we digitize a lot of stuff from our university archives and our special collections and make those available as well. Um, so right now, currently, we have 40,000 objects in digital case. Um, we say both sort of digital and born digital and stuff that we've actually digitized to be able to put into it um, within 102 different collections. Um, and they could be, like I said, text, images, videos, maps, data sets, anything of the like. Um, and just so I took some screenshots of some example of content that we have in here. This was actually some videos that a faculty member in the biology department uh, had used to write a journal article and he needed to be able to reference the videos in his journal article. So we were able to give him the permanent URLs to be published with his article referencing the video that he talks about in, in that article. Um, Catherine Karapides, if you've ever heard of her, she's a famous dance instructor uh, and performer um, on campus. So we have, her, we have her collection available in digital case. Um, we get the operation research reports from the Weatherhead School of Management. Um, from our own collection, we have, if you remember from the WPA in the 30s, uh, for the Works Progress Administration, the prints that we have at the library, we've also digitized and made available via digital case. So, you know, why should you care about this? Um, you know, wh what we talk about is this is a great place to be able to put your stuff, your scholarship and your data. Um, and, you know, it becomes even more relevant now that we start talking about the importance of data management plans. Uh, digital case is a home that you could be able to put your data into in regards to a data management plan, as is the, the work that, that Mike and um, Roger are doing. Uh, but it also, by, by depositing your data here, it also gives you greater access to the data. Um, it, gives, uh, it gives you access through Google. Um, also, our, cert, our summon search engine which searches across all of the resources of the library that we make available to the university. Uh, it's integrated in through that as well. Um, we also have a partnership with the Hathi Trust that we're working on and potential other partnerships through the Digital Public Library of America. The contents of digital case can be harvested and made available to other, other institutions. So it gives you a greater impact for the content that, you, that you'd be putting in there. Um, we, also allow, we also have citation exports. So if you're looking at something in digital case, you could export the, the citation for it. Um, we also provide reporting and usage statistics for the stuff that's actually in digital case. Um, so, uh, like I said, we just replatformed, um, which means the, the the basics are still up. The basics are up and running, but we have a lot more that we want to do with this platform. Um, one of the things is the ability to create to have self-deposit. If you remember, sort of old digital case, there was that ability, and we're going to be putting that back in. So you have the ability to go ahead and deposit the content that you want to put in yourself into digital case. Um, we're also looking at the ability to sort of bulk up, bulk ingest large large amounts of files and data. Um, collection-based templating. Um, and then we're also working with, and this is where it's really helpful to be in a community, in an open source community like we are, um, to be able to look at sort of the, the future of scholarship and data and to be able to house and display that content, such as using 3D models, GIS data sets. Um, we're also looking at website archiving to be able to capture and display websites um, throughout digital case. And then I also ask, what else? You know, this is where we're looking to partner with people on campus to find out what, what needs do you have of a repository like this to be able to store your data. If you, look at the, if, if you look at scholarly publishing today and scholarly communication, it's drastically changing in the digital world that we have. And so having a service like this is well positioned to be able to, f to be flexible to meet those needs um, for, for the content that you want to be putting out there. So, so that's just sort of a quick overview of our institutional repository. Um, you know, we're really excited to be working with um, ITS on both the storage and the backup that comes with this, um, but also to see how we could be partnering with, um, with high performance computing. Um, we also, in the library, we also have the Friedman Center for Digital Scholarship. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work in supporting sort of the broad, the, the broad needs of digital scholarship on campus. We're actually redesigning the Friedman Center. We're in the planning phase right now of redesigning the Friedman Center for Digital Scholarship. Um, I think we're going to even be able to get a couple high performance computing nodes in there um, in the library as well. Um, we also have what we call the Friedman Fellows Program. This is something that is in partnership with the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, we have about a pool of $15,000 that we're supporting um, faculty researchers on to be able to advance their projects that, that involve some level of technology. 
Um, it's nowhere near the standards of NSF, um, but it's, it's nice if, we're, if you need a little bit of a bump in some of the research that you're doing, uh, but the deadline's quickly approaching, so if you're interested, uh, contact me. Um, also through the library, we have metadata expertise, which is, which is really valuable um, when you're looking at being able to describe and make your content available. Um, we also have some data management instruction that we do through our Case Learns program. Uh, and you know, we work with some of the other campus um, uh, service providers to be able to provide support for data management. Um, we've also uh, integrated, you know, in addition to sort of our standard research services librarians that we use that, that partner with faculty on their projects, we've also um, hired two specialized digital, digital research services librarians, one focused on the humanities and one focused on the sciences. Um, so that's sort of a way that we're, we're sort of making a move into supporting some of the new digital scholarship that's happening on campus. Um, and then digital preservation is, is something else that we've also been getting into, looking at the long-term preservation of these digital objects that we're creating. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing with this, but from a library perspective, you know, we look at this in the long term and how can we make sure that we're sort of, you know, uh, taking care and preserving the cultural memory uh, of, of this university and of our community as, as a whole. So that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take them.